Today, we're going to embark on an intriguing journey with unexpected connections that you probably never knew existed. We'll explore the hidden depths of liver and kidney dysfunction that can unleash a reign of terror on our bodies and target our peripheral nerves. I'll share with you how these organ systems can inadvertently wreak havoc with your peripheral nerves. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a journey that will leave you informed and empowered to conquer your peripheral neuropathy. You don't want to miss this. Coming up. Hey gang, Dr. Valerie Montero here. If you're finally ready to conquer your peripheral neuropathy, reclaim your life and start living again, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell so you're notified as soon as we publish new content. Now, let's kick things off with a bang as we shine a spotlight on the liver. Liver dysfunction and disease is a massive issue affecting over 100 million people in the U.S. alone. Whether it's from excessive alcohol consumption or other causes, liver dysfunction can be a sneaky culprit behind neuropathy. When you have a dysfunctional, sick, or diseased liver, a few things can happen. Your liver has a diminished capacity to clear all of the toxins that are entering the body. As a result, chemicals that normally get purged within a few hours or a few days may end up deposited in our tissues for months to years on end. This backup can cause systemic inflammation, which can cause a slow and insidious damage to our peripheral nerves. Now, if the liver disease or dysfunction has progressed, it may cause a backup of fluids in the body, which can also inflame, irritate, and damage peripheral nerves. A common test used to monitor liver function and health are liver enzyme panels monitored from a simple blood sample. It will look at the following measurements, AST, ALT, ALP, bilirubin, and albumin. These are the standards that will be monitored. Now, remember in functional medicine, we don't just check to make sure that the lab values are within normal limits. We also check to make sure that these values are at optimal levels. So there are two enzymes that have a broad range for their normal values, and that's AST and ALT. Normal lab values for AST are 8 to 48 units per liter, and for ALT, they're between 7 to 55 units per liter. Now, you may not have a full-blown case of liver disease, but if your ALT or your AST values are above 20 units per liter, this is an indication that your liver is entering into toxic overload and it has a greater toxic burden that is growing. You want to avoid this because it will increase inflammation in your body and around your peripheral nerves. Optimally, you want these levels at 20 units per liter or lower. Whether you're experiencing mild liver dysfunction or full-blown liver disease, you can do things to keep your liver healthy and happy and to improve its function. Start by assisting your liver by reducing its tox toxic load, a toxic load that we place on it daily. You can do this in a variety of different ways. First, Clean up your diet and get rid of all the processed food and toxic beverages. So that's going to be huge. And guys, I'm not saying you can't ever eat the horrible foods that you like the most, but I'm saying we need to begin um, really minimizing them. Next. Incorporate foods that are superheroes to your liver. These are beetroots, radishes, turmeric, ginger, cruciferous vegetables, leafy greens, garlic, carrots, avocados, apples, and citrus fruits. It's also helpful to support your liver function with the following supplements like milk thistle, dandelion root, knack or N-acetylcysteine, burdock root, yellow dock, turmeric, and ginger. In helping your liver clear toxins from your body, you also alleviate systemic inflammation. Now, the next uh, dysfunction that I want to cover is kidney dysfunction, which is no small player either. Believe it or not, a whopping 37 million Americans are battling chronic kidney disease. 
Most people know that the job of your kidneys is to remove waste products from the blood and produce urine to shuttle these waste products out. But did you also know that your kidneys are responsible for making and regulating important hormones that help to control your blood pressure, your red blood cell production, and your calcium uptake from your intestines? Your kidneys also maintain your body fluids at the correct levels and help to control your body chemistry by regulating the amount of sodium, water, and other chemicals in your body. Now, when you experience kidney dysfunction or chronic kidney disease, it's like having a filtering system that's on the fritz, which will lead to higher toxin levels in the blood. And guess what? These toxins can directly damage our nerves and the tiny blood vessels that supplies them. But wait, there's more. Folks on dialysis, or also known as end-stage kidney disease, face additional risks due to fluctuating vitamin and mineral levels, which is a double whammy for our poor peripheral nerves. So let's take a look at how we can support your kidneys and help your peripheral nerves out. The first thing you wanna do is look at where your lab values are at for your kidneys. There are a few different lab values on a kidney panel that doctors look at, but I'm gonna keep it really simple for you. I'm only gonna cover one called your glomerular filtration rate or GFR. This value tells us how well your kidneys are filtering waste from your body, and it can indicate if there's any kidney damage or even if your kidneys are stressed. Normal lab values will indicate that a GFR greater than or equal to 60 is within normal range. Now, when you're dealing with stage one or two um, chronic kidney disease, your GFR may be within normal range. It may be hovering at, let's say, 60 or, or 70, but you may have protein in your urine. And this is an indication, even though the GFR looks normal, it's an indication that your kidneys are stressed or they're beginning to struggle. There's a problem that has to be focused on. Once you fall below 60, you are now classified in stages 3A to 5 of chronic kidney disease. Stage 5 indicates kidney failure. So where do you want your GFR to be optimally? You want to aim for 90 or above. A GFR of 60 to 89 is considered mildly decreased in filtration function. This is what we call stressed kidneys, not diseased, but stressed. Now, I won't go into all of the intricacies of kidney disease and peripheral neuropathy here because I'll be doing a video solely dedicated to this topic because it's such an important one. But in order to, to protect your kidney health, there are a few things that are critical for you to do. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're controlling your glucose levels. The absolute best way to do this is with diet and exercise. Make sure you're following a healthy ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. You also want to take supplements like R-alpha lipoic acid, berberine, and benfodiamine, which will help improve your insulin sensitivity and decrease your glucose levels. Make sure you're monitoring your glucose levels when you're taking these supplements because they're extremely effective at lowering blood sugar, but you want to make sure that your levels are not dropping below 70 nanograms per deciliter in a fasting state. Next. Do not take NSAIDs. These are pain relief formulas like ibuprofen, such as Motrin or Advil, aspirin like Bayer or Bufferin, and naproxen like Aleve, also Celebrex. These can do enormous damage to kidney cells. But let's take a quick peek at how you can improve your kidney function before you reach full-blown kidney failure. Okay, can you guess the number one thing I'm going to tell you to do? If you guessed drink more water, you're absolutely on target, guys. Most people are in trouble with their kidneys because they've been chronically dehydrated. Your kidneys are processing some powerful chemicals in your body. And if you're not hydrating them with enough water, damage will ensue. Make sure you're consuming at least two liters or 64 ounces of water daily. This is the bare minimum. The water should be filtered. Never drink tap water. Make sure you watch our video on drink this to calm your nerves. Next, add lemon juice to that water. Lemons are rich in vitamin C and citric acid, which helps to fight kidney stones and maintains internal pH balance. Minimize or avoid caffeinated beverages as this will further stress your kidneys. 
Also, avoid the dreaded artificial sweeteners, as this can have immense damaging effects on your kidneys. Now, the other thing you want to do is consume fruits and vegetables that are healing to your kidneys. And those are things like arugula, which also increases your nitric oxide production. You want to consume radishes, cauliflower, parsley, blueberries, especially blueberries. This is a powerhouse to the kidneys and the body. You also want to make sure you're eating red grapes, cabbage, cherries, bell peppers, ginger, turmeric, onions, turnips, pineapple, cranberries, and shiitake mushrooms, which are loaded with many health benefits. Now, if you're a diabetic, guys, you want to stay away from pineapple and turnips. These have a moderate glycemic index and can elevate your glucose levels. There are also herbal ingredients uh, that you can take to support your kidneys because they have the ability to remove toxins. And those are dandelion leaf, not the root in this case, although you can use both together. Dandelion root predominantly functions in liver and gallbladder detoxification. So for the kidneys, you want to focus on dandelion leaf. Other herbs that are great for kidney cleansing are red clover, goldenrod, marshmallow root, burdock root, and nettle root. The following supplements play a large role in supporting kidney health. The first one is RALA. This powerful antioxidant plays a vital role in protecting your kidneys from oxidative damage. Another powerhouse that protects your kidneys from oxidative damage is Moringa, a green superfood. You can take this in powder or capsule form. Your kidneys can also benefit immensely from taking NAC, and acetylcysteine which is a precursor to glutathione, your body's master antioxidant. NAC is great in protecting your kidneys from heavy metals and other chemical toxins. NAC can also limit the damage of AGEs, advanced glycated end products, and protect the blood vessels of your kidneys. Now, this next one may surprise you. It's probiotics. We commonly think of probiotics being associated with just gut health. But these beneficial bacteria can also protect your kidneys and your nerves by decreasing inflammation and the production of uremic toxins, which come about from the kidneys. This stool action improves kidney function. Make sure to get a probiotic with multi-strains, including lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and streptococcus probiotic bacteria. These bacteria help in the metabolism and excretion of uremic toxins. The last supplement is resveratrol. Research has revealed that this supplement can protect your kidneys from a variety of toxins, including heavy metals, drugs, and alcohol, which can cause both renal injury and peripheral nerve injury. Clinical studies have also shown that resveratrol may also improve renal function once an injury has occurred. So that's huge news, guys. I'll include links below to the supplements that I just mentioned uh, and the ones that I use to prescribe for my patients. Again, none of these companies have sponsored me and I'm not getting paid by any of these companies. These are merely supplements we've been using for years on our patients. Now, I want to leave you with a powerful message of hope and empowerment. Today, we've delved into the intricate connections between liver and kidney dysfunction and peripheral neuropathy. But here's the good news. Armed with the knowledge and a proactive approach, you have the ability to conquer peripheral neuropathy and reclaim your lives. By taking control of your health and making positive changes, you'll have a profound impact on your health and your nerves and your overall well-being for that matter. By reducing the toxic load on our liver and supporting its function, we can alleviate the ongoing damage to our nerves and other tissues and improve our recovery from neuropathy. And let's not forget the power of hydration. It's as simple as drinking enough water to keep our kidneys properly hydrated and flushed so they're functioning at their best. Bear in mind, in the grand scheme of things, these lifestyle changes are only small compromises to regain your health and restore your nerves. You have so much more living to do, and it's all about the quality of your life. So don't you think it's worth it? 
Well guys, if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like this video so we can reach more neuropathy sufferers so they know they're not alone in this journey. Also, don't forget to click on the bell to get notified when we release new content. I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. It's toxic load. One that we place on it, let's go back damage to kidney cells okay but let these can do enormous damage to kidneys which is a precursor to glutathione your body's master antioxidant it's stuck